time. Really nice looking fish. Wow, that's a trophy. That's a hog! Woo! Nice job, you two. There we go. Lund Boats proudly presents the ultimate fishing experience. This week on Lund's The Ultimate Fishing Experience. For anglers to experience what it's like to fish for unpressured fish, you can either fly to some remote lake in northern Canada or target species that few other anglers take advantage of. Case in point, the smallmouth bass in the Missouri River system. The reservoirs of the Missouri River in both North and South Dakota have long been the mecca for walleye anglers. And little, if any, attention is paid to the prolific numbers of these willing biters. It seems to be there's even more now than there was then. There's so much habitat and so much food that these fish are going to be here for a lot of years to come. It's not unheard of for anglers to experience 50 to 100 fish days. Those kind of numbers should get the attention of anyone who likes to set the hook. Man, they're feisty, fight hard, battle well. Even professional walleye angler Johnny Candle, along with Ethan Preston, couldn't resist miles and miles of untapped smallmouth bass. It's hard to believe that more people don't come here to chase smallmouth. That was a blast. That's an incredible day, man. Hey, I'm professional angler Johnny Candle, and I'm here with my good buddy Ethan Preston today. We're fishing Lake Sakakawea out of Indian Hills Resort. It's one of my favorite places on earth. The scenery here is spectacular as the fishing. They're pretty famous for their walleyes, but we're mixing it up today. We're going to chase big bronze backs, and I think we're going to have a great time. Indian Hills is smack dab in the middle of Lake Sakakawea, which is a good thing because it gives us a lot of options. We're here the middle of June. Water temperatures are anywhere between the low 50s to lower 60s, and water clarity could be an issue today too. We've had a lot of wind lately, so we got to find that perfect combination, clean water, warm water, and then figure out what the fish want to bite. And playing off of that, we have a lot of baits on the deck from a jerk bait all the way down to a Ned Rig, variety of water temperatures and water color. We're gonna have to play around and go searching for a while. Once we catch a couple, maybe slow down with those bottom baits. Let's go get them. Let's do it. The key to finding smallmouth bass here on Lake Sakakawe is obviously the rocks. There's a couple ways we can go about finding them. The first is to visually look at the shoreline and you can see these rock and boulder outcroppings all up and down the lake, but that doesn't tell us much about where they extend to. So I've been running up and down the bank slow speed using my side imaging to see the rocks and how far they extend from shore. Some of these fish are coming right up in the rocks, but the transition area is usually the key. Knowing where that extends to and stops helps us position the boat and put our baits right in the strike zone. There you go. Good boy, buddy. There he is. I've been uh, fishing Lakes Kakawea for 25 years now, and. Even back then, the smallmouth bass were plentiful, but it seems to be there's even more now than there was then, and the awareness is getting to be a lot better. There's more folks fishing for them, and uh, as more folks fish for them, we unlock more secrets, catch more fish, and there's so much habitat and so much food that these fish are going to be here for a lot of years to come. Did you switch to a drop shot on me? I did. Oh, come on. That's I did. cheating. Nope. Cheater. <laughs> nope, that's not cheating. Got to match is. the hatch. That's cheating. Johnny's throwing them with the turd. I got a little drop shot with just a little white minnow on there. Um, the main forage for these fish and most of Sakakawea is schmelt. And uh, so that's what I'm trying to do, just match the hatch here. And <laughs> this is about the size of the ones that we've caught walleyes before too and they throw up. So that's kind of what I'm trying to do, just match the hatch, work it slow. and. They seem to be thunking it pretty good now. He said schmelt. There's no H in smelt. Well, I'm sorry. I'll have to do it again. There's no H in smelt. Well, do you say smelt? 
yes, I say smell. <laughs> There's no H. Closed captioning is brought to you by Mercury Marine. Go boldly. I'm going to guess, Ethan, it's going to be one of those days that at about 4 o'clock when your body's telling you we should be quitting, we're going to wish we had just started because, like you said, water temperatures are going to rise steadily throughout the day. Uh, the water clarity here isn't bad, but it's going to get better because it's nice and calm. And it's that time of year. It's spring. Uh, fish want warmth just like we want warmth. And the warmer it gets, the more active they're going to get. As it gets more active, it might be different techniques, fish a little more aggressive. Who knows, but it's going to be a fun day. There, there you go. Look at that one, Johnny. Oh, now you're talking. <laughs> now we're talking. Yeah. You need a hand or you got him? I can get a hand. Though. That's a better size one, I think. There we go. Pull oh, hole, nice fish. There we go. That one's got the black fins on them too. These ones got a lot better color. So we switched it up, drop shot a little bit earlier. Now I switch to the um, tube jig. A little bit different thing that I do here is I put a half ounce tube jig head in here, a little bit bigger than what everybody else is usually accustomed to throwing. And I don't really drag this tube jig at all. The last couple fish have been coming. As soon as I hit the bottom, give it a one pop, which allows it to dart off to the side. It hits the bottom, give it a two pop, and kind of a cadence, almost like you would a jerk bait. But this thing allows, with a bigger style head, it darts off to the side. It doesn't slowly fall back down, and it can be more of a reaction style bite for what would be considered more of a finesse tube jig. <laughs> Waldo, look at there. You take the walleye guy bass fishing. One thing about bass gear, you just hoist them right in. <laughs> I know we're uh, looking for bronze backs, but that one's going to go for dinner, Ethan, I think, right there. They got no problems eating a beautiful walleye like that. Nice fish. They were right on that. That right there, the where that little, little cut system. is, right? Yeah, it's like a little root system. Yeah. Got one? Yeah. Right next to the bank. That can't be very big. It's a tube jig kind of day, buddy. A little tinsel in there with that sun hits it. Wipe at it. First pop. The big bowling ball. That one's got some cool colors on it. There we go. Come on. Jump. Oh yeah. Oh, we're talking. There we go. Man, they're feisty. Fight hard, battle well. Fun fish to catch. Hey, do it. Now we're still bouncing around searching spots, and these swim baits have been great search baits. That paddle tail works well at fast speeds and slow speeds. Like Ethan mentioned earlier, we switched to a white color to imitate the smelt here in Lake Skakawea. It's not a color you're used to seeing for smallmouth bass, usually green pumpkin. Uh, watermelon, June bug, all those, but man, you can't argue when you catch them on back-to-back -back casts with a, with a white swim bait. So I'm using a, the Strike King Rage Swimmer. 
What I really like about this bait, other than the fact that it's got some incredible action, is it's got a nice groove in the back of the bait, so it makes it really easy to line your hook up. You just get her in the body, try to keep her right in the middle, and then when you come out of the bait, you just want to make sure you're in the center of that groove. Lines up, slide her up on the head, and now you know that bait's nice and balanced and it's going to track in a straight line, which is critical some days to catch them. Not always, but the other thing that's really great about this, and look around, there's nobody else out here. Have the lake all to yourself. A fish or a rock? That's a fish, isn't it? That one out deeper? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a that's that that's one right. That's a fish. Right there. But yeah. I just threw past. You're right in front of him. There's one. He picked it up. Run with it. Run with it. Yeah. Little one. Same spot Johnny's throwing. He left me a couple. Not real big. Only because I'm tying knots. <laughs> I wonder if they would chase a, I don't know if a whopper plopper would be my choice, but a little pop bar. Like a little head and pop bar, which I don't even own one. I use, I lose them all white bass fishing because the pike eat them. <laughs> I take, there we go, there we go. They don't give up very easily. That's a little bit better. Getting there. We're getting there. So we talked earlier about not knowing exactly what to expect today. And this search bait, the swim bait, has been catching a lot of fish, has been really productive. But we came ready for battle. We started out this morning with some other search baits. I've got a shallow water jerk bait here. We also have some baits to slow down with. They've got a, a finesse tube and a Ned rig with the TRD tied on as well. And all of this stuff you'll notice I'm fishing on spinning gear, which is more than adequate for what we're doing. I'm using 10 pound braided line with a 10 pound fluorocarbon leader, and it, that's gonna get the job done. Medium power rods, fast action tips are perfect for what we're doing. You're gonna be able to cover the whole gamut. But Ethan's fishing a little bit more aggressive than I am, and I'm gonna let him fill you in on what he's using. So most of my stuff that I have rigged up is exactly what Johnny was just telling you. Most of the spinning tackle, everything like that, a drop shot, again with the paddle tail swimmer. The only difference is when I'm fishing this tube jig, again, I told you earlier, a half ounce jig head, which is a little bit bigger than anyone else normally throws. But again, I have this on a medium heavy bait casting setup with 12 or even up to 20 pound fluorocarbon line. I'm a little bit bigger hook on this jig head which allows me to stick fish a little bit better even if there's some bushes and stuff in cover. But again for me, I'm, and I'm working it more aggressive to where I'm popping that tube jig quite a bit. So a bigger line and bait casting setups what I'm more comfortable with. So all morning we've been cruising around looking for rocks and we found a lot and the bass are in them. But the sun's getting a little higher and the temperature's creeping up slowly but surely. We're starting to see a lot of activity as we look towards the shore. A lot of shadows from the bank, but all of a sudden the rocks will start to move a little bit. And it's not rocks. It's pretty cool to watch these smallmouth moving right up on the bank, warming up in those nice sunny spots. And it, it gives us a target to cast to. Watch him swim from the shore and grab it. Just a dark shadow chasing after it, right by that rock. Not huge, but if they're chasing that far, a couple water temperature getting warmer, they'll be chasing. 
We talked about before having that tube jig be a little bit bigger, but even, you know, 14, 15 inch fish can still swallow that. That, thing <laughs> <laughs> that came right out of the same spot. Same spot. Woo! <laughs> I'll do that again. I think we're getting a lot of males. We need to find those bigger pre-spawn females, get into those four and five pounders, but what a great afternoon or morning or any time of day for that matter when you're catching fish and pull that hard and almost calling our shots here lately. So a lot of fun. Oh, 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 did he go down on it? I can't see him, I lost him in the glare, but he came out to you. There we go. That was fun. Saw that target cruising the bank, cast right at him. Watch that fish turn on my jig and, and ate it right up. And that's really unique for me personally. I grew up smallmouth fishing on Lake Erie where we just randomly fan cast on big rock flats. And, as a walleye fisherman, we never get to see what we're fishing for. So being able to see a target, cast to it, and catch it's a lot of fun. And the other thing that's really great about this, catching fish like this, and look around, there's nobody else out here. Have the lake all to yourself. Well, you might ask why a walleye pro wants to fish out of a bass boat. Well, the first reason is pretty obvious, so I can do more bass fishing like we're doing today, but this Pro-V Bass is not just a bass boat. It's the same Pro-V haul that we've come to know and love for years. Handles the chop incredibly well. For multi-species anglers that want to chase musky, walleye, bass, panfish, all on the same waters, it's an absolute dream. The boat has the elevated deck, so it makes seeing into the water a little bit easier. It's got the sport track, so you can mount rod holders wherever you need them. And that 250 Pro XS pushes it right down the lake like a dream. I don't know why more anglers in the north don't look at the Pro-V Bass. I think they're making a big mistake. Got my boat powered with the Mercury 250 Pro XS. It's the new eight-cylinder four-stroke. Other than the fact that it sounds really cool when you start it, it's a runner. I've got it mounted on a Magnum jack plate from Powertran. A lot of people get confused with jack plates. They think it's all about speed, and it helps a little bit with top speed. But what it allows is me to run my engine height at the optimum position regardless of the conditions. If the lake is rougher, I might want the engine lower so the prop grabs more. If it's calm and I want to get the boat out of the water a little bit, I can raise it up. Or I can adjust for the amount of weight that's in the boat. Two people, I can run that engine a little higher, and four people, I might want to run it a little lower. So complete adjustability, plus I can get in and out of shallow spots a heck of a lot easier. That fish. Oh, yeah, there we go. Now we're talking. Now we're talking, we're talking. Oh, there we go. There you have her, Lakes Kakawea, all to yourself. Small, mice, small mouth bass like that, can't beat it. This shoreline might not be as picture perfect as some of the others we fished, but the wind picked up a little bit today. And I don't care if you're in a reservoir, a natural lake, or anything in between, wind blown shorelines are key to hold bait fish which attracts all species of game fish. And it's really hard to drive by one if it looks right with the wind blowing on without making a few casts. There we got one now. Oh, look at there, Ethan. Hey. You can uh, put a walleye guy in a bass boat, but you can't 
keep the walleyes off the end of this fishing line for very long. That's a dang nice one too. You wanna yeah. grab a net back there? Yeah. It's all right, a nice fish. It's actually uh, too big for dinner. Oops, brownie. Oh, there's a, oh yeah. On the pop. go. Live in the same spots. Probably a little big to keep. We'll put that one back for another day. Johnny just saw some rocks on a bank. We pulled up, of course, just like the other spot. Windblown bank, little mud line. He's a little bit darker style tube there, but we haven't been here very long. And first fish over here. Another little pattern to try. Lake Sakakawea, pretty famous for its walleye fishing, Ethan, but man, fish like this, it's hard to believe that more people don't come here to chase smallmouth. Next time you head this way, you might want to bring some spinning rods and some paddle tails. And That's for sure. Chase a bunch of fish like this, huh? That was a blast. That's an incredible day, man. Thanks for coming along. No awesome. problem, thanks for the invite. Thanks for joining us. If you'd like more information, check out lundboats.com or these other online outlets.